In this video, we're going to see how to make a regression using the steps that can be used on a TI-83 or TI-84 calculator. There's four parts to it, and our, in our first part, we need to enter the data that we have into lists. So here, say that we are comparing the time and hours to a concentration of a substance in milligrams per liter. So my first step here is I want to clear the information that I might have used in previous examples. So to do that, I'm going to take my calculator and click second plus and pick option number four. I'm going to get the clear all lists that pops up. I'm gonna make sure to push enter to make sure that my calculator actually clears what I did before. Next what I'm going to do is I'm gonna access the list feature by pressing stat and then option number one here, so edit. Now I can put my numbers in. And even if I have a horizontal table of values like here in the notes, I'm going to want to put it vertically on my graphing calculator. So what that means is the time numbers are going to be going in list one and the concentration numbers are going to be going in list two. So when I put in a number and I need to go to the next one, I'm going to push the enter key. And once all the cells are filled, just make sure you put them in correctly, and then push the right arrow to go into list two. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have values that are zeros, make sure to put them in as well. Sometimes those get mixed, missed. And also if you have values that are repeated. So say you have the same number two times, make sure to actually put it in twice or else your calculator might give you an error message or it might give you the wrong information. So once again, when you're done, make sure that the numbers have been put in properly. And once you've done that, you can exit this list by pressing second and then quit. And then we're back to the main screen. So part two now, plotting data as a scatter plot, I want to actually make those two lists give me points that I can see on a graph. So next up, I'm going to go to y equals and see if there's any graphs that are there from before. And if there are, make sure to clear them. Next, I want to set some appropriate window settings for the x and y data values. So I'm going to push window and to figure out what my window settings are, I can see what I have in my table of values. So usually in a horizontal table of values like this, our top numbers are the X values and our bottom numbers are the Y values. So I know my smallest X value is zero and my biggest X value is nine. Now, usually we do start graphs at zero unless we're in the negatives, which we're not here, but then our X max needs to be at least nine. I'm going to leave it at 10 here just because sometimes some questions ask you to continue the graph and we'd like to see a little bit beyond our max x value. As for scale, that just tells you how often you'll put a line on the x or y axes. In this case, one is good enough. Now, as for the concentration numbers, our y values, the minimum is zero. It doesn't really make sense to have a negative concentration, so I'll start it at zero as well. But then my biggest y value is 47.8. And I want my y max to be a little bit above that so I can see the top of my graph. So I'll put it at 50. Though if you were to put it at 55 or 60, that'd be okay too. Now as for the y scale, if I try to get my graphing calculator to put a, every, a line at every one on the y axis, it might not look very good. So rather than having a y scale of one, I'm going to put it at five. If I'm zooming out a little bit like I am here, my scale should do the same. And so now that that's done, I'm on to step number three in part two. Once the data has been entered in lists, access the stat plot by pressing second, then y equals, and then option one. Now we wanna make sure that this function's actually on. So I'm gonna push enter here so that on is the blinking icon right here. Then I need to make sure that x list is showing L1 and y list is showing Y2. And that just tells the calculator that my x values are found in the first list and the y values are found in the second. But we already dealt with that, so we're good there. If you have a newer model calculator, like this one here, it's also gonna prompt you for the color of the dots. If you have an older model calculator, you won't get that feature, but your graph will still look the same. So now that that's done, I can push graph. And I'll see the points that we plotted in the lists earlier. Now, as for step three, we now want to calculate an equation to represent the data that we have. 
And so, first of all, we need to decide which type of equation best represents the data you have in your graph. And so sometimes the question will give it to you, but sometimes you'll need to find it on your own. And in this case, it ends up looking like a quadratic function. I see a maximum, it has a parabolic shape, and it looks fairly symmetric on both sides. So I'm going to assume this information is best represented by a quadratic. So now that I know that, I'm going to go to the stat button to the left of the left arrow. But seeing as I want my calculator to start calculating stuff, I'm going to push the right arrow now. And I'm going to scroll down. And in this case, I'm going to pick option number five because I had said that this data looks like it's based off of a quadratic function. And this just stands for quadratic regression. So I'm going to push enter. Now, if you have a TI-84 calculator, you'll get to this screen right here, where it once again just reminds you that your X values are coming from list one and your Y values are coming from list two. We don't need to change anything there, so we can just scroll down and push enter for calculate. If you have a TI-83, you'll end up getting that quad reg showing up on your main screen and you'll just push enter there as well. And so now we have our parameters, our A, B, and C values, that would represent the points that I have on my graph. So now we can move on to part four. So graphing the curve to represent the data plot. So once the equation of the data has been determined, which we have it here, the equation can be copied into y equals by using the following procedure. So step one, we're going to push y equals and then vars, which is here, just a little bit underneath the left arrow. And then we're going to pick option number five for statistics. And that's just because we wanna pull our statistics, our list values, from the list that we made back in step one. Now, seeing as I want an equation, I'm gonna scroll to EQ, and I'm gonna pick option one. So now, as you can see, those parameters, the A, B, and C values are put in order, and they're put into Y equals. So now I have the graph where it needs to be, and to see the graph, I can just push graph. And now I can see that curve of best fit that represents the data that I have. And so just as a reminder, if you decide to do other types of questions after this where you might not need those points, you might not need the stat plot, remember to turn it off. And then once you do, you won't be able to see those points that you put in earlier.